Today we are going to look into the circuit breaker pattern and how to implement it in Spring Boot using Resilience for GI library. Let's start with a real world example. Let's imagine a real electrical circuit. There is a power source, a wire and a switch. When everything works, the current flows and the light stays on. And in this case, the switch is closed. But if there is a fault, let's say a short circuit, the switch trips and it goes to open state, cutting off the flow to protect the system. That's exactly the idea behind the circuit breaker pattern in software. In software systems, especially microservices, you often make calls to other services, like a payment service or a third party API. But what happens if that service is down or responding slowly? If we keep calling it, we are wasting resources and hurting our performance. The circuit breaker pattern protects your application from these failures by breaking the circuit, essentially stopping further calls when a service is not responsive. Let's take a closer look at the internals of the circuit breaker. So we have a closed state and this is when everything works fine. The requests flow normally to the third party API or the external system. Then we've got an open state. This open state is reached when we go above a certain failure threshold. So in this open state, the downstream service is failing. The circuit opens and all calls are blocked instantly. Then we've got a third state, which is the half open state. After a wait time, a few test requests are sent to the downstream service. If they succeed, the circuit closes again. If they fail, it goes back to open. Now that we know what a circuit breaker is, let's talk about how to implement it in a Spring Boot microservice. I've created a simple Spring Boot project using Spring Initializer. Let's start by looking at the pom.xml to see which dependencies we need. So I've added these four dependencies and this is all you should need. So we've got the actuator dependency. So this one provides health endpoints for our application, which are going to be used by the circuit breaker. I've got the Spring Boot Starter Web. Uh, we are going to create a simple web application with a controller and a service class that is simulating a call to a third party API. So that's why we need it. The circuit breaker related dependencies. Then we've got the AOP dependency. So as I said, we're going to create a dummy application that simulates calls to a third party API. So to do that, I'm going to create a new package. And in this package, we're going to create a controller class. So let's create the controller package. And in here, let's say we're building a weather application. So we're going to have a weather controller. And this is going to be a REST controller. Let's also create our service class. So I'm going to create first a service package. In here, let's create a weather service. And let's tag this using the service tag. Let's go back to the controller. Let's inject this service class we have created. So let's inject the weather service. Let's inject it in the controller as well. So now let's create a simple endpoint. So this is going to return the weather and this is going to simply do a get weather. It's going to get a city as input and this is going to be passed as a request parameter. And we are then simply going to call the weather service and we're going to call this get weather uh, method in the weather service. So let's create this method. Let's go to our weather service. Let's simply create this method which simulates a call to a weather API. If the city name is error, we're going to simulate throwing an exception. And we also want to simulate a timeout because the circuit breaker also works if the requests are taking too long. Uh, if the city is going to be timeout, we're going to simulate a three second uh, operation. If we just send a normal city, this is going to return a dummy response, sunny in whatever city. So we have created this. Let's quickly just test this to see what happens right now. So I'm going to create a configuration. I'll call it uh, CB. Let's click apply. Okay. Let's run this and let's call this endpoint and let's see what happens. So let's create a get request and the city, let's say London, 
it says sun in London, but let's say if we send error, it throws a 500 as expected because we have not implemented the circuit breaker yet. And let's say timeout. So this should last at least three seconds. And as you can see, it does. So we have built the skeleton to do a third party API simulation. Let's go back to our code. I'm just going to stop this for now. And now let's implement the circuit breaker. So the first thing we need to do is open our weather controller. And on this endpoint, we're going to create a circuit breaker by using this tag, this annotation. And I'm going to give a name to this circuit breaker, which is going to be get weather circuit breaker. You can give a name to circuit breakers so that you can configure each circuit breaker independently if needed. We also have a fallback method. What this does is going to call this method and you might be wondering what it is. So we are simply going to create it. You have to make sure that this name is the same as the fallback method name. And what this will do is in case of failure in the downstream endpoint, it's simply going to return maybe a default message or whatever you want. In this case, we're just going to say weather service is currently unavailable for and the name of the city. And you can also pass a throwable here to print an exception if needed. But this is enough for now. The other thing we now need to do is do some configuration. So if we open our application the properties, we need to add a couple of properties. So the first one is to enable the actuator endpoints. As I said, these are endpoints provided by Spring Boot actuators, which provide the health of the application. And then we've got some circuit breaker configuration for our external API. So in this case, we call this circuit breaker get weather circuit breaker. So this is a instance level configuration. You can also have default configuration for your circuit breaker and it will look like this. The only difference is configs.default and this is going to be the default configuration. This is just to show you an example, but we are not going to need this. So I'm going to remove this from here. And let's take a quick look at these properties. So we are registering the health endpoint with the circuit breaker. We are going to be using a sliding window to determine which requests to look at. So what this means is that if 50% of the last five requests fail, we want to set the circuit breaker to an open state and stop requests going to the downstream service. We also have some other configurations. So we have a maximum wait in open state of 10 seconds. So if no other requests are failing and 10 seconds have elapsed, we just go back to the closed state. Then we've got the number of permitted calls in the half open state. So as we said, when the circuit breaker opens, we let few requests go to the half open state, which then try to call the downstream endpoint. And that's to check if the downstream is back up again or not. And we also want to add the transition from open to half open automatically. If the calls are slow, and let's say we set the threshold to two seconds, this is also going to count as a circuit breaker intervention. What this means is that if the calls are slow, the circuit breaker is going to go in an open state. And it's as simple as that. We have defined the configurations. And as I said, you can have multiple circuit breakers. So if you had more, you can just create more properties for that specific one. You just have to give the right name over here. So let's try this out. Let's see if this works. I'm going to run our application. This has started correctly. So if you go to Postman, let's first try the happy path. So if I say London, it says sunny day. Let's check the status of our circuit breaker. And to do that, we can call this actuator circuit breakers endpoint. If I click send, it gives us all the information we need for the circuit breaker. And as you can see right now, it's in closed state. So requests are going through normally. Let's now try to simulate some errors. So we're going to send error. We send it a couple of times. You can see the weather service is currently unavailable. Let's check the state. So it's still closed. Let's try multiple requests. 
and as you can see it went into open state and now in few seconds it should go to half open to allow requests if i send another failing request this is still in half open because we want to send at least two and it went again in open state but let's say we now send a proper request it's sent in london let's send it a few times this should now go to closed state because the requests are now flowing through correctly again let's also try the timeout so if i send this few times let's see what's happening I just send one more as you can see the circuit breaker is in open state still open it's in half open let's try to send again and now we're simulating slow response time from the downstream circuit breaker is still open but let's say the downstream has recovered and now if we go back our circuit breaker is in closed state again so that's the circuit breaker pattern using resilience for j in spring boot it helps you keep your app stable when dependencies fail and lets you gracefully handle those failures without crashing your service or slowing down the user experience if you found this video useful and you want me to make more videos like this please give it a thumbs up and if you've ever wondered how i keep my coding skills sharp all year round then let me introduce you to brilliant Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. It's hands-on learning that actually sticks. Instead of passively watching videos, you're solving fun, bite-sized problems that train you to think like a real programmer. Whether you are learning a foundation or brushing up on advanced concepts, Brilliant makes it easy to learn anywhere, anytime with their mobile application. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash leadjourney or scan the QR code on screen. You will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Huge thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video.